Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing well and uh, coming to you guys with a networking video today, especially talking about a firewall solution known as PFSense. No doubt you guys have seen or heard of PFSense, uh, open source firewall, very popular in the home lab environment, even in the enterprise. So we're gonna take a look at what it takes to install a PFSense firewall in a virtual machine running in VMware vSphere. What are the considerations? What are the configurations that you need to make? Well, stick around, we're gonna take a look. So we're going to get started installing PFSense into a VMware vSphere environment. So to do that, one of the first steps that you need to take is actually getting the media that we're going to use to actually install the PFSense firewall appliance inside a virtual machine uh, in VMware vSphere. So to do that, you just simply navigate to pfsense.org or you can just simply Google download pfsense and it's going to bring you to that uh, first hit on google is uh, pfsense.org uh, as you can see as of this uh, video uh, at this time the latest version is 2.6.0 so we're going to now select the architecture that we want to use so we're going to choose the amd 64 64 bit uh, installer and we're going to choose the DVD ISO installer. So once we've made that selection, we simply download uh, that ISO image. And once that ISO image pulls down, we will then upload to our vSphere data store and then begin our installation. Now that we have the ISO image downloaded, what we need to do is get that ISO up to our vSphere data store. So to do that, we just simply browse to our storage uh, I have created an ISOs folder just for uh, better organization on the data store. And as you can see, it's a lab environment, nothing much going on there. We're just simply going to click the upload files uh, and we are going to select the PFSense ISO that we just extracted. I'm going to say open and we're going to allow this file to upload to the data store. Now the ISO has been uploaded to the VMware uh, vSphere data store. So now we are ready to begin the creation of the virtual machine. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my uh, inventory view with uh, hosts and clusters. I'm going to right click on the cluster, just select new virtual machine. And here we're just simply uh, beginning the process to uh, create the new virtual machine that will house the PFSense installation. So I'm gonna say create new virtual machine select next. I'm going to name this PFSense and select our data center. I'm going to click next. We've got our cluster selected for the compute resource. I'm going to select next and we're going to uh, select which storage will house the PFSense installation. So I'm selecting the vSAN data store that's in the lab environment. Clicking next. Selecting the compatibility, I'm just accepting the highest level that we have available to us in this particular lab environment. Clicking next. And here we're going to make some changes. So in guest OS family, we're going to select other. And in the guest OS version, we're going to uh, select the dropdown. We're going to select free BSD 13 or later version 64 bit. Going to click next. So now on the customized hardware screen, we're going to have several changes that we need to make in order to install PFSense correctly. So a firewall like PFSense needs at least two network adapters. And the reason for that is you need a WAN connection or the connection that is connected to your internet service provider and receives that configuration from them. And then you also need an internal interface where your clients reside. So the firewall uh, by design and by nature will sit in between your clients as well as the internet connection uh, for that protective layer. So uh, we need to add at least another network adapter. As you can see by default, 
the new virtual machine wizard is just going to add a single network adapter. What we need to do is we need to add a network adapter. And as you can see, they both are defaulting to internet port group, which we don't want because this in this environment uh, signifies the WAN connection. So what I'm gonna do is leave the first network adapter connected to that internet port group that is in the lab environment, at least simulating a WAN connection. On the second network adapter, we're going to browse and we're going to change this to VM network. Uh, and what that will do for us is it will allow that internal LAN connection. So WAN, in this case, represents internet port group and VM network, in this case, represents our LAN connection, or our trusted connection uh, in those legacy terms. So we've got internet and VM network. Now, what we need to do uh, as well is on the new SCSI controller, by default, it's uh, selecting the VM, uh, VMware Para Virtual. So we need to change that, as by default, there is not a storage driver that uh, will recognize the VMware pair virtual uh, storage controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the LSI Logic SAS uh, controller. And actually either one of the LSI Logic controllers will work. So I'm going to select LSI Logic SAS and that will be our storage controller uh, which will allow us to uh, successfully recognize that in our PFSense installation. Now we need to, on the CD-ROM uh, configuration, we need to choose the data store ISO file. Uh, as we recall, we uploaded the uh, ISO image for PFSense that we downloaded from uh, pfsense.org. So we're going to select that in this ISO configuration. And we can select connect here. Uh, and also we can make sure that, and by default it is, but we want to verify it's uh, selected to connect at power on because we want that ISO to be available uh, to uh, successfully install PFSense. Now what we need to do is just simply click Next and we are ready to complete this initial configuration. So the virtual machine has been created in our vSphere inventory. As you can see, we've got PFSense listed. So what we want to do now is we want to power on this virtual machine. And after powering on, we're going to open the remote console uh, so we can gain console access to uh, our PFSense installation. So we have the installer is booted to the uh, basically the EULA for the installation. So we're going to click inside the remote console. So we're just going to hit enter and we get the normal menu here. We're going to select to install PFSense. We're going to select the default key map. And here I am just simply selecting the BIOS option. So we're going to uh, click into the BIOS. Uh, it's going to look at our uh, configured storage and it's going to start fetching those distribution files from the ISO checksums. It's going to then start writing uh, the installation to the storage. It's finished, so we simply just click uh, no here uh, because we don't want to make any final modifications. We're just going to say no. So now we see the installation is complete and the installer is simply asking us to reboot the appliance. So now we see the installation of PFSense booting the virtual machine. So you're going to see the same process except the difference this time will be our PFSense installation will be reading the information from the local storage. This uh, basically text installer or configuration uh, portion uh, basically allows us to get just enough configuration network wise on the PFSense installation that we can then with the web configurator portion of PFSense we can then configure the rest of the installation using the GUI wizard. So here we're just going to step through a couple of things uh, that are listed. So it's asking, should VLANs be set up now? We're going to, se we're going to select no to that because uh, you want to pay attention, make sure you're lining these up correctly because the installer will not know uh, that you have those uh, port groups mixed up on the VMware side. So we're going to select here that we want the VMX0 uh, NIC 
uh, virtual NIC to be used for that WAN connection. Now, um, enter the LAN interface. So by default, there's only one left. So we're going to select the VMX1. So now what we see, it's just going to go through, it's going to configure the WAN and the LAN interfaces. And then once we have those configured, we'll be able to proceed with the web configurator. Okay, so now we have the initial uh, configuration has taken place on our PFSense. And as you can see, I am simulating a WAN connection using a private IP address. So I've got a separate network for uh, WAN simulation. And then I have the uh, LAN side uh, also pulling a private IP. So that's what the private IPs are about here. So as you can see, PFSense is initially configured. So what we can do at this point is we can browse out to the uh, IP address of the LAN side initially to process through that web configurator configuration of PFSense. So now we have the web configurator portion of the PFSense configuration in vSphere. We can browse to the web configurator, which is housed in the LAN address by default. So we just simply open a browser, browse to that IP address, and you should be presented with the sign-in screen. So by default, the username is admin and then PFSense as the password. So as we see here, we've got the web configurator portion. So again, this is going to be a wizard. Uh, we're going to just next through a few of the configuration options here. Uh, so initially, we're just going to say next, uh, set the uh, host name. So we're going to say pfsense lab and domain is cloud.local, primary DNS server configuration. You can set a secondary override DNS options. We're just going to say next. Uh, NTP configuration, if you have a custom internal NTP server or another NTP server that uh, you prefer to use, uh, set your time zone if you uh, want to do that. Uh, click next. Uh, I'm simply just going to uh, show you guys the options that you have available. So very uh, verbose options here on the WAN configuration side. So you've got all kinds of options to uh, allow you to configure a WAN connection for just about any internet service provider that I can think of. Uh, you can use PFSense with those. So we're going to click Next. Uh, we can configure the LAN interface at this point. I'm just going to leave that as is. We can set our web GUI password, which we want to definitely change that from the default of PFSense, as everyone knows that. I'm going to say Next. And we're going to simply at this point reload the interface. After clicking that reload button, now we see that uh, the initial configuration is uh, said to have completed. We can just simply uh, click finish. And after clicking finish, uh, we're going to see some normal uh, prompts here and uh, dialog boxes thanking us for installing PFSense. Uh, so there we go. We've got a working installation of PFSense uh, installed in a VMware virtual machine. And if you notice, the dashboard is, is fairly nice in PFSense. It's customizable. Uh, you can also add widgets to this dashboard for your initial configuration. Customize the look and feel of this dashboard. Uh, also, you might want to add the uh, traffic graphs is also kind of one of those default widgets that most people like to see. These are dr uh, drag and drop so you can rearrange uh, if you want your traffic graphs to be at the very top, interfaces, statistics, other things. Um, as you can see, the uh, PFSense options are many. So PFSense very uh, fully featured, uh, lots of enterprise features for a open source firewall uh, distribution. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video overview of installing PFSense in VMware vSphere. What firewall solution are you using in your home lab environment? Or what firewall distribution are you looking to get to know or get more familiar with? Are you looking at migrating your firewall services to a different platform? I'd be interested to know what you're using and what your plans are for the rest of this year and beyond. 
Well, I'm Brandon Lee, and I hope you've enjoyed this video overview of PFSense and VMware vSphere, as well as the rest of the content on the channel. Please do hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel, and I think you will really like some of the content we have coming your way soon.